I can remember having a record deal and being broke and going to Puff and being like, yo, Sherry's about to go back home and work at Walmart. Like, f this shit. Like, it's like, it, this is this is dead. in Cleveland was was very middle class um, I lived with my dad and my stepmom um, my dad is my best friend he raised me I'm his only um, but music was just always kind of a part of my household I'd listen to vinyl and I just dig in the crates and I just go through and listen to music and I think that just kind of formulated like my love for music my dad for my 12th birthday I guess he could see like it in me that like this girl can really sing maybe I should try and cultivate that or do something with it so for my 12th birthday he took me and my best friend at the time to a recording studio and that was my birthday present um i think there was like a producer there that had a girls group and they were looking for another girl i was in the group spoiled from the ages of 12 to 16. one it was cool because it it actually gave me a platform to practice you know becoming a better singer better songwriter um, but it also taught me that I need to be a solo artist I mean I got along with the girls I, that's a lie sorry I'm lying <laughs> I didn't always get along with them um, I had fist fights with like a few of the girls in the group. Sometimes with girls, like it, it can be catty, it can be a lot of jealousy. And from that point on, it really made me be like, okay, this whole group thing is probably not like, you know, my path. From the time that I got out of the singing group to about the time that I moved to New York or just really started courting New York and taking that seriously, I met a guy named Jimmy Cozier. And Jimmy was like, you should just come to New York and like do some pre-production stuff and you know try and get a deal and so from there I moved to New York I started going when I was 18 and then I kind of like took a bag and was kind of like living out of this bag and sleeping at like his house and at 19 I had a record deal you know, we have a lot of artists on bad boy. I got this one new artist that I want to bring out let her do her thing she's a young lady she's trying to make it this is the part of the show we dedicate to the ladies my name is Sherry Dennis Sherry the first time that I met Diddy I was 19 and he was he was pretty charming Jimmy Cozier was having a birthday party, and so him and Kim Porter, rest in peace, sweet woman, um, came to the birthday party. I just really sat down next to him and just kind of like sung over like whatever was playing. I kind of freestyled over whatever was playing in the club, and um, yeah, I guess he liked me. A couple weeks later, I remember him uh, inviting me to come to daddy's house, and I remember him giving me this bad boy jacket. I was just so like mesmerized at the fact that it's like a place that I had like listened to the music and loved and like Toto, like Biggie, everybody, 112, that I was so like hyped up about that, that it was just the whole thing itself was just like really whimsical if I could do for lack of a better word. I was like, wow, like I'm about to be signed to this label where not only I get to like live out my dreams, but I'm in a place where I admire the artist. Like I'm a fan of the, of the artist. So I hadn't yet got the concept of music business and the whole industry. It didn't taint that at that, at that moment. <laughs> So Complete is one of my favorite songs. Um, I feel like at the time, it was the whole like resurgence of Bad Boy. They did like, you know, they had G-Dep, he was new, he had Loon, he was new. It was like all these new rap artists on the label. And I was the girl 
And I feel like I had one of the best songs on the album. And I also feel like had So Complete been like really pushed and been like my first record, I feel like my career would have been a little different. Till this day, I feel slighted on that record. I really do. I feel like they should have did more with it. I feel like people were saying that they were doing, that they needed to do more with it. And I just feel like, you know, sometimes you get caught up in the politics. Like you're in a situation where you're getting opportunities, you know what I mean? And you're living, you're living your best life, as they say. Um, but then you're still like on the shelf, like it's not your project. Like I'm signed, but is this going to happen? You know what I mean? And then thinking that you have records and thinking that, you know, you have other people being like, you're so dope, when are you coming out? And then to have the home that you're at, like kind of just, like pushing you to the side or not seeing the vision, it can be frustrating. I can remember having a record deal and being broke. So I remember Marjorie going to, to, to the label and going to Puff and being like, yo, Sherry's about to go back home and work at Walmart. Like, f this shit. Like, it's like, it, this, is, this is dead. So I remember them giving me like this large check. You know what I mean? But the be prior to that, I was like, yo, son, like, how am I? having a record deal and like not being able to like really like manage and survive like this is crazy. So I think those were like, that was one of the times where I was like really frustrated, like just not knowing how to like, you know, survive. New York City is expensive. Bad Boy started giving me money every month until the time that I left. So I honestly never really had to work. Um, you know, shout out to Diddy for that. You know what I mean? Meeting Ryan Leslie was a little awkward at first because I came off a little bit obnoxious about the music. I remember being a little stank um, about the way that I felt about maybe the music that he played me. And I do kind of remember an energy of him being kind of like taken aback. Like, you know, again, shorty's bugged out. In hindsight, I might have been a little wrong about Ryan Leslie because yeah, Ryan Leslie is Ryan Leslie. You know, so at the time, yeah, I, I dropped the ball on that one. We had just been sitting for a while and we were like frustrated and we said, okay, we need to put something out. So we went to Puff, we asked him like, is, we want to use I Love You. And he was like, no, I don't think that's it. So we were like, yeah, it is it. And so we, at the time we had Rich Dollars who worked at Bad Boy and Ryan at the time helped us white label the record. So we got the vinyl pressed up ourselves. And so the way that it caught Puff's attention was that we would be like in the clubs and the DJs would be dropping it. And it kind of came by way of that, like us do, because we probably would, I don't know, we'd probably still be sitting on the show right now. Had we not, you know, just kind of forced the hand, we moved very independently in a major situation because we all we didn't always have the support. The I Love You music video was tedious because of the wardrobe confusion and conflict between me and Puff. <laughs> we had a stylist named Marnie, really, really dope stylist. She had me come in, do the fitting. We picked out really dope outfits. The day of the shoot, Puff comes in and he's like, no, no, change this, change that. Um, they airbrushed my tattoos out. If you go look at I Love You, you can't see the one on my chest, like the ones on my arms, like he, did his thing, um, you know, the Bob haircut, that was like all they're doing. And I think I might have had like a, a like a pink on and he was like, oh no, made me change the fingernail polish. It was like, had to be like this soft, like uh, uh, iridescent, I don't know, it was like eggshell color. <laughs> like it was just real safe. I'm trying to think of what look in I Love You was me most of all. I guess the one where I have on the sweatsuit. 
and I'm like standing up against the wall. I think that kind of shows like my personality. I'm, I'm like the most girly tomboy you'll ever meet. So when I Love You dropped, um, the popularity definitely gained and it was weird <laughs> to say the least. I, I never was in it for fame. You know what I mean? Fame is kind of makes me feel awkward. So that part of it was really weird for me. You had to look a certain way, be a certain way, talk a certain way. And if you stepped outside of that, it was like open season. A lot of times at Bad Boy, that was an issue too because I've always been like this really quirky, funky tattoos, funny hair, you know, and I don't think that I fit into the sweet R&B, you know, girl that he wanted. And that's why we had a lot of creative differences because the type of music that I wanted to make, the way I wanted to look, it wasn't reflective of what he saw for me, you know, and at that time, that's pretty much how stuff went. Like they, you know, they got a marketing team, they come up with an image and you gotta move within that image. And I've always kind of moved left of center, you know. They would try to put me with like songwriters and I've always been really sensitive about my art and I'm not the type of person where like, you could just throw me into like a circle of like six or seven songwriters and I'm just like, you know, like it has to be organic for me. But it was a like, you know, it was a job. So I think they were like churning out hits and like, you know, so they wanted all these writers to jump together. And a lot of times it just wouldn't be like that for me. So there was um, a particular song at the time Diddy was going with J-Lo. I feel like J-Lo might have had a hand in writing this record. I don't know the politics behind it, but I have a version. It's a song that Faith Evans recorded. It's called I Love You. And it goes, I love you. Oh, you're the one that I live for. I hated the song. And and, af and after coming from I Love You, I was just like, I don't want to sing another record that says I love you. Like, I'm over it, you know? And he gave that record to her. And to this day, I don't regret it because I just didn't love it. Like, I didn't like it. I still don't really like it. That it doesn't mean it's not a good song. It just wasn't a song for Sherry Dennis at, at all. And quiet as kept, I feel like, I mean, this could just be me, you know, but I feel like that was her second single off that album. And I feel like that album didn't really do anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Boop, boop. Sherry Dennis. J-O-C. Portrait of Love, um, they came, they played it for me, didn't like it, and uh, it took me forever. Like, I can sing a song just like that, but it took me forever, it was like pulling teeth. And I, I told myself and I told my manager, I was like, maybe if I just drag my ass on this, like, you know, they'll just scrap it, you know? Puff was like, nope. No, just keep on coming back and doing it. Um, two, I was in a relationship, had a little situation go down, and I was overweight. So if you look at I Love You, as opposed to the clothes in Portrait of Love, it's a lot of covered up situations. So I just was uncomfortable all across the board. You know what I'm saying? Like, And then they tried to put like choreography into it, which, I can dance, but if you look at that video, they gave me like a day and a half. I got to LA, they put me with a choreographer. They gave me like a day to learn the choreography. And it was just like a hot mess. Like the whole shit was just like a hot mess. And so I feel like you can see the awkwardness in the video. Like when I look at that, I don't even like watching Portrait of Love video. Like I'm, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like that's a dub. I feel like my album In and Out of Love was not complete because um, it was just like a collage of old songs, new songs, and I just felt like it wasn't a cohesive thought. I feel like there were records that never made the album. I feel like there were songs that were so old that made the album that should have never made the album. I feel like the artist that you are in 2008 as opposed to 2002 when you make some of these records, you're not even the same, or you don't even sound the same. I wanted to make music that like, might have made people uncomfortable, might not have got, like, they might not have understood it at that time, but it was like groundbreaking. Like I wanted to be the girl that was like, wait a minute, 
like shorty with all these tattoos, like shorty with this color hair. Like I feel like there has to be someone to do it first. You would see other girl singers or your peers maybe make a play that you might have said, yo, can we do this or can we do that? And then it worked for them. And you're like, what the f Like, I know who I want to be. I know what kind of music I want to make. And I got to fight the niggas that's around me that's supposed to believe in my vision. I got to fight y'all too. Puff, Puff was more like, you know, you good, baby girl. You got to just be patient. Like, I got this. Like, I know what I'm doing, shorty. Like, I make stars. Like, I know how to do this. Like, it was more so like that type of vibe. Like, just chill out. Like, you, you know, you, you good. And I wasn't good. <laughs> You know, people like to, they always ask me questions about Puff, like, like he's like, like it was such a bad situation. And I, and I tell people, like, that man gave me an opportunity, like, I could never shit, you know what I mean? I could never shit on him. Um, yeah, there were times when I felt slighted. Yeah, there were times when I was frustrated. Yeah, there were times when I was angry at him. But to sit around and bash him or to talk shit for a man that gave me an opportunity and not only gave me an opportunity, but gave me money like for years on top of years. I can't even say anything negative about him. My deal was set up so that like I didn't get dropped. They released me and they cut me a check. And that's kind of how that went. The freedom that I felt afterwards <laughs> is priceless. I think I definitely was misunderstood, but all in all, I wouldn't change it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's my story and I like me again. I like who I am. I wasted a lot of time like with, with personal relationships, like not, not nurturing them, you know what I mean? I have stepsisters, I have biological sisters. I feel like because I'm such a recluse and I was going through so much, I feel like I spent a lot of time being to myself and that, that's probably the hardest thing when I think back on that time is that um, I missed a lot of time with those people, you know? So that's, that's the hardest for me. My grandmother, my dad, you know, my sisters. Like, I feel like I missed a whole lot. And even with having my daughter now, I waited so long because it was just music and being an artist and chasing, 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 I feel like those are the regrets that I have, you know? It's not so much um, bad boy or music stuff, you know, because I can live with that because I still have the opportunity. I still have the purpose and the gift that God gave me. Nobody can take that from me. But when I think about the other side of life, you know, I feel like I missed out on a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the hardest part for me. Sherry Coke came from, um, you know, the Sherry Coke, the bottle shape. People used to say that about me, like, oh, you have, like, you know, the Coke bottle shape, so. And then it's, like, dope, like, raw, like, never stepped one. X times Coke was um, just very dear to me because it allowed me to just get back into the free-flowing type of creativity that I've always wanted to do. And Mello is an amazing producer and he allowed me the space and the room to just be myself creatively. Before I started working with Mello X, um, I was surfing the internet and I found him and I thought it was really dope. And so we ended up doing a whole project together. It just allowed me to kind of step back into being like, oh, I don't have to, you know, sing a song this way or write it this way or stay within these guidelines. You know what I mean? It reminded me of that. I ended up being on the MGK record because the guy that I was seeing he was styling him. And I guess maybe MGK asked about me. Shit, since we putting it out there. I feel like they wanted to pick my brain. I feel like they had already known that they were gonna do the bad boy situation or maybe they were courting the bad boy situation. And looking back, I didn't know that at the time and I feel like I came to the studio and I was being asked a whole lot of questions about like my experience at the bad, bad boy and my relationship with Puff and how was it and this, that, and the third. And I'm looking back in hindsight, um, for a long time, I felt like a, a type of way about that. 
I did the record with them, and then I had a record I wanted MGK to get on. And I kept sending the record and kept asking and kept like, and they never did the record. And I felt some type of way about that for a long time too, because I did it with no problem. Like they asked me to come to do the record, I did it. Shout out to MGK, I think he's a phenomenal artist, but yeah, I felt like that was, I felt the shade in that. I felt slighted on that one. The real break that I took just happened. Like I just moved from New York and I think I needed to come home and just be Sherry for two seconds. Like be around my family, my friends, again, back to just having the, the, the people that just appreciate me for me. So somebody was not with the bandana on the head. They kind of turned it into a fashion statement. I mean, it's around her neck. But my daughter is everything to me. That's like the new part of me. You know, that gives me a whole purpose that I never had before. My daughter is like, you know, that's like, I don't even know how to, I can't even put that, describe that feeling into words of how she makes me feel. And the motivation that it gives me um, as an artist, as a person, you know, she makes me want to be a better everything, you know, better sister, friend, daughter, best friend, mom. She makes me want to artist, all that. I'm really excited about the R&B showcase because it's the first time that I've performed in the city in a very, very long time. It's really surprising the love that I've received. Um, I'm always humbled by it, which lets me know that anytime people have encountered me as obnoxious as I think that I might have been or, or in my own head about what it was that I was going through in my experience, I don't think that I always gave that off or maybe they didn't receive it that way because people always show me so much love. And it just gives me an opportunity to let people know that, like, I still love music. You can't take the art from me. You can't take the music from me. Like, you might take the drive to be, like, chasing this whole, um, you know, mainstream moment. But as far as the gift that I've been given, that's never been broken, you know what I mean? Like, I, even if I'm just in my room, I'm always, I, when I'm alone, I sing, you know what I mean? That is just something that I, I think I need that to live. I think that is a part of who I am. And I will always make music, always. Like, it's just something that I don't know how to not do. I'm dope. I'm Sherry Coke, man. <laughs> I never do it again, no. Don't ever wanna see.